Meteor by Patricia Polacco. Many years ago, when my brother and I were small, Mom let us spend the summer with our Grandma and Grandpa Gall on their farm in Michigan. One night, far above that little farm, a star sputtered and flashed and started to fall. As it fell through the night sky, the geese honked their alarm, the chickens cackled, and the goats bleated and jumped wildly about. The bright light hit with a long, fiery tail, streaked through the sky unnoticed by my family. Grandpa was reading the Herald. Grandma was correcting school papers. Cousin Steve was tinkering with his wireless. My brother Richard was practicing the piano, and I was reading a storybook. Suddenly, without warning, the house started shaking. Plaster came loose from the ceiling. Dishes fell from shelves. Rugs curled on the floor as if they had a life of their own. The flaming object made a terrible sound as it went shrieking over the roof of the house. Then it crashed into the ground with a horribly loud boom. It landed with such force that glass broke. Chairs overturned, windows rattled, and walls shuddered. The front door was laid open by the blast, and through it, an eerie light could be seen glowing from a big hole in the front yard. We were stunned, but soon curiosity overcame caution, and we timidly made our way outdoors for a look-see. Why, it's a fallen star, Grandpa gasped. Of all the places on Earth, a meteor could have fallen. It landed smack dab in the middle of our yard, Grandma exclaimed. Grandpa and Cousin, cousin Steve pounded stakes all around the meteor and roped it off. The next morning, Grandma called Uncle Carl. That's what I said, Carl. A real fallen star right in my front yard. Carl called Bertie Potter. Did you hear, Bertie? A falling star out by the gall place in Mudsock Meadow. Came in so low, it almost hit the house. Bertie called Mayor Hatch. That's right, Howard. It took off the roof and almost hit the clothesline. That poor family. Mayor Hatch called Pearly Beach. Unbelievable! Took the roof, the power lines, and hit a cow. Pearly called Vera. I'll tell you, it flattened the gall place, took the power lines, water mains, killed the stock, and it's still smoking. Vera called Mr. Titus at the hardware store. The whole place is gone. The barn, the animals, and there's poison smoke a coming from it. Mr. Titus called Officer Washburn, who called Fire Chief. Sounds like they'll be needing us, Chief Quizzle exclaimed. He started up Engine 23, turned on the siren, and headed out. But news traveled through the town faster than the engine could leave the firehouse. And Union City was abuzz with what had happened in Mudsock Meadow. Merchants closed their shops, school was let out before noon, and just about Everyone in town headed for the Gall Place to see the mysterious meteor. I wonder how big it is. Just think, it came from way out in space. Isn't this the most exciting thing? I can't wait to see Carly, George, and the kids. This is more exciting than when Bertie Felspaw got her elbow caught in the revolving door at the library over Cold Water Way. As the crowd jostled, trotted, rolled, and bumped through the countryside, bystanders and onlookers joined in and came along to see the meteor. Dr. Trotter's medicine wagon, the Coldwater Chautauqua Circus, and the Union City Ladies Lyceum fell in with the parade of citizens. They were soon joined by Union City High School Band, which hooted, tooted, boomed, and jingled their instruments as they ran down the hillside. As more and more people arrived, Grandma and Grandpa's farm soon became a carnival of meteoric events. Meteor basket lunches were auctioned, meteor popcorn was popped, meteor lemonade was made, meteor liniment was sold, and the Chattawaqua Circus was going to give a meteoric performance. But most folks simply stood and stared at the wondrous meteor. To think, 
Grandma repeated to everyone. Of all the places on earth it could have landed, it came smack dab in the middle of our yard. She beamed with pride and was truly happy to see friends that she usually only saw once or twice a year. Helio the Great, master of stratospheric maneuvers and atmospheric acrobatics, while on his way to the Ionia State Fair, landed his hot air balloon and offered special meteor rides. These included an ascent of approximately 40 feet and a slow descent in order to take in the full panorama of the farm and the meteor. The Union City High School Band gave a meteoric concert. In the midst of all the festivities, a group of scientists arrived from Battle Creek College, the University of Michigan, and Michigan State University Science Departments. They set up all their buzzing testing equipment and put on strange looking protective suits. They turned on all of the machinery. Click, click, pop, whiz, poopery, poopery, it went. The scientists looked thoughtful, scratched their heads, and wrote down lots and lots of data. They measured, pondered, quizzed, and figured. The crowd leaned closer, and their chief finally spoke. Yes, sir, that there is a genuine meteorite. The cloud clapped and cheered. Charlie Lake struck up the band, and the circus began a meteoric performance. Ling Po and Ping Hao, the jugglers, threw little golden balls and shiny silver rings around and around in the air, while Tilly and Lily, the dancing elephants, balanced on one foot as the leaping luckies, the trained dogs, jumped about and did somersaults. The Union City Lyceum Dance Troupe performed a special number of interpretive movement depicting both the falling of the meteor and the last days of Pompeii. I touched the meteor, Tommy Enderby said to Marietta Crimmel, and as soon as I did, I could play my trumpet better than ever before. Marietta told Cecil Potter that after she touched the meteor, she thought up the best recipe for pie she ever did have. I'm going to enter the pie contest at the next fair, she exclaimed. Cecil told Dr. Trotter that since she'd touched the meter, she had more energy than she'd had in years. I'll tell you, I could feel something coming right up into my finger from that there fallen star. It's magic, I tell you. Dr. Trotter claimed that ever since he touched the meteor, his liniment had acquired super mysterious healing powers. Hollis D. Lonsbury, in turn, was convinced that his best hog was going to become the prize winner. I'm going to enter him in the Ionia State Fair, he chirped to Gladys Pardee. Gladys was positive that since she'd touched the meteor, her eyesight improved instantly. I'm telling you, Leonard, she said to Mr. Pinehurst, I can see all the way across the barnyard. Extraordinary, he sighed as he stared at his forefinger. I touched it too, and I feel special, really special. As folks left the golf farm that day, they all felt special. They were changed somehow, inspired by the act of touching something that had flown across the galaxy. It seemed like magic, all right. The Union City High School Band went on to win the state championship that year, thanks to a trumpet solo played by Tommy Enderby and Marietta's current blueberry pie took first place at the county fair. Hollis D. Lonsbury's best hog, Herman, won best of show at the Ionia State Fair. Maybe these things would have happened anyway, but who can say for sure? All I know is that for three generations, the meteor was a source of wonder to the little town of Union City, Michigan, and especially to my family. It remained on the very spot where it landed until it was moved to a lovely green hillside overlooking the St. Joseph River to become my grandmother's headstone. It is there to this day.